entire song. It's a metaphor for big dicks. No, I don't. It's about a girl who's very vulnerable. Dick, 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 dick. How many dicks is that? A lot. So when they this guy's uh like, Whoa. Dialogue, I mean, man. This cat is like Charles Bronson in the Great Wow, Space. crazy. You shoot me in a dream, you better wake up and apologize. <laughs> 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 I like that one. Let me just get this straight. You don't ever tip, huh? I don't tip because society says I have to. All right, I mean, I'll tip if somebody really deserves a tip. If they really put forth the effort, I'll give them something extra. But, I mean, it's tipping automatically. Uh, it's for the birds. <laughs> for the birds. They're just doing their job. Hey, this girl was nice. She was okay. I mean, she wasn't anything special. What's special? Take you in the back and suck your dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'd go over twelve percent for that. Hey, look, I ordered coffee. <laughs> here a long. They make minimum wage. I know I used to work minimum wage, and when I did, I wasn't lucky enough to have a job that society deemed to. In Texas, they made like three dollars an hour. Tips to live. This is a hard job. So I was working at McDonald's, but you don't feel the need to tip them, do you? Why not? Yeah, that's true. Food, but no, society says, don't tip these guys over here, but tip these guys over here. That's bullshit. You don't tip. What do you mean you don't tip? They don't believe in it. Shut up. What do you mean you don't believe in it? Come on, you <laughs> cough up a bucket, cheap bastard. Doing a film by Quentin Tarantino. This guy with the music all the time, man. Good stuff. Reservoir Dog. Oh. I'm gonna die alone. Oh. Excuse me, I didn't realize you had a degree in medicine. <laughs> You're gonna be okay. This is how you start a movie, man. That's the famous warehouse. I've seen a lot of like top 10 videos on YouTube about movies and stuff. And they always bring this one up. Well, not always, but a lot. I don't know, I thought that they didn't know each other. Why is he being like so caring? You know, like criminal that's supposed to be real hard, you know, like cold. Where's the uh, brown? Good. Oh. How did he die? How the fuck do you think? The cop shot. <laughs> Is it bad? As opposed to good? <laughs> I recognize a lot of his uh, writing style in this movie that he used later on, like in Pulp Fiction and stuff. A little internet trivia. The film's budget was so low that many of the actors were asked to simply bring their own clothing as wardrobe. Most notably, Chris Penn's track jacket. The signature black suit was provided for free by the designer based on her love for the American crime film genre. Madonna who was the main topic of the opening conversation, really liked the film, but refuted Quinn Tarantino's interpretation of her song, Like a Virgin. She gave him a copy of her erotica album, signed to Quentin. It's not about dick, it's about love, Madonna. <laughs> Tim, Roth the... Tim Roth refused to read for the film. He did insist on going out drinking with Quentin Tarantino and Harvey Keitel. He agreed to read for them while they were all drunk. <laughs> Robert Kurtzman did the special makeup effects for free on the condition that Quentin Tarantino wrote a script for From Dusk Till Dawn based on a story by Kurtzman. Ah, okay. On a day off during the shoot, Lawrence Tierney was arrested for allegedly pulling a gun on his nephew, Michael Tierney. According to Quentin Tarantino, Tierney was taken from his bail arraignment to the set. I know it was a low budget movie, but man, that must have cost a few dollars. Tagged a couple of cops. Did you kill anybody? A few cops. No real people? Just cops. <laughs> no real people. <laughs> what kind of warehouse is that? 
I mean, the man was dying in my arms. What the fuck was I supposed to do? Just gotta give him a fake Is name. Yeah, I'm sure it was a very beautiful scene between you. Don't fucking patronize me. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have a sheet on you where you're from? Yeah. Yeah. I got Is that a casket? You might want to see, though. Surprise. I guess it's a sure mortuary like warehouse. I guess you got a few movie mistakes when Mr. Blonde is pouring gasoline on Marvin Nash. Nash's legs are taped to the chair. When the angle changes, you can see his legs kicking up in the air. When they go back to being taped up. <laughs> Mr. Blonde opens his barber blade twice. Gonna try to catch that. A door swings open on its own during during the shooting. When the camera circles around Mr. Orange in the bathroom, the shadow of the camera falls on the wall. Hey, like Paul Fiction, the same angle as Paul Fiction. You got the brick phone. You think I did it? You think I fucking set you up? I don't know. How many times did they say fucking in this movie? Fucking asshole is turning there you go, Don't fucking you call me an asshole. asshole. You fucking idiot. Turn a fucking Jewish <laughs> Don't you call me an asshole. Fucking idiot. idiot. I will call somebody. Oh. Fucking snake charmer. What do you think? I'll call a doctor. I'll fix him right up. <laughs> That's an egg charmer. You see what I've been putting up with, Eddie? I fucking walked in here. I told these Oh, yeah. They closed the door that uh, accidentally opened. Mr. White whips out his gun. He's sticking it in my face, calling me a motherfucker. I told him not to touch the fucking alarm. They did. If they hadn't have done what I told them not to do, they'd still be alive. <laughs> oh, my fucking hero. Come on, tell me he's gonna start dancing. Okay. He's like, just kill me. Oh, he could have ear off. Hey, what's going on? Ah. Okay, no way this guy's a rat. No, he's gonna no. Oh. I didn't see that coming at all. I'm a cop. Oh man. Yeah, I know. So he's a cop, huh? Freddy Moondike. No wonder he shot him. Okay. He didn't tell. Getting his ear ripped off and everything. Quentin Tarantino likes putting him in a diner. I had a connection with this hippie chick up in Santa Cruz and all my friends knew it. They give me a call on the Hey, Santa Cruz. Hey, Freddie. I grew up going there. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown waits in the car. Parked across the street, it's like in the signal, then he pulls up in front of the store. Mr. Blonde and Mr. Blue. Crowd control. They handle customers and employees. That girl's ass. It's sitting right here on my dick. <laughs> <laughs> this movie has a 90% tomato meter, 94% audience score. I'm hungry. Let's get a taco. <laughs> but definitely in California. Oh, what? That's how he got shot. But the cops shot him. Half his ear was gonna burn him alive. This cop? Oh. That lump of shit's working with the LAPD. Oh, man. I don't have the slightest fucking idea what you're talking about joe joe i don't know what you think well, for how long could a man bleed out like that like hell i am joe, it's a lot of blood man this you made a mistake put that fucking gun down now god damn you joe don't make me do this larry stop pointing that fucking gun in my dad oh Okay, Corral. <laughs> Mr. Pink, he's gonna be the one that survives. Face! Drop the fucking gun, buddy! Put the gun down! Don't do it! Drop the gun, man! Don't drop the gun! Drop the fucking gun! We're gonna fucking blow you away! Nice.
Ah, okay. Well, yeah. Pink, uh, Pink was the only one that made it. Like every uh, Quentin Tarantino movie, his movie has real good dialogue. But there's parts when you can tell that he was just throwing things in there just to stretch the movie out to 90 minutes or whatever, whatever it is, like an hour and 40 minutes. Because he did that, there's part that kind of dragged a little bit. And I didn't feel that way with Pulp Fiction. But, you know, first movie, low budget. He, he had to work with what he got. So it's, all, it's like forgivable. It's all right. I like the plot twist. A lot of things you don't see coming. Acting is top notch. Music is real good, like always in a Quentin Tarantino movie. So with that being said, I'm giving this movie here a seven. It's rewatchable. I could watch it again, and I could recommend it. Catch you on the next one. Counterfeiting is a billion dollar business perpetrated by thousands of people throughout the world. Meet Kimo, one of those people. Kimo is a young man from the most dangerous city in America. After losing his job, he ventures into the risky business of counterfeiting to help relocate his family to a better place.